Shut it, my father ordered. We stood on the mud flat of Orchard Beach in the Bronx, circa 1965. I was seven, and monarch butterflies danced south over the surf on their annual migration. Flopped between the opened pages of a hardcover book, a monarch twitched its body and antenna. Using a cobbled together stick and net, we'd knock down the insect. Next dad said we would entomb it. My dad saw creation as something to control. Other creatures would be contained or killed. I don't want to kill a butterfly, I said. Weak, he called me. Whiner. So I shut the book hard, hoping the monarch would die instantly. In the Bible, God said, let man have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth. I believe that the word dominion is open to interpretation. I've long considered it to mean responsibility. Another summer, under Dad's orders, the five of us little kids brought home a bucket of pink-shelled moon snails in salt water. Dad insisted that the snails would stay alive in our apartment, but they died shortly in stink and slime before we flushed them down the toilet. We were blamed for the deaths in a grouping of put-downs and curse words that only a New York man such as my father could put together. Stupid fucks, he called us. But beach business wasn't always so salty. I recall sweetly how when the song Wooly Bully came on the radio, Dad would speed up the 55 Chevy Bel Air around the Pelham Bay Park traffic circle, and the five of us kids sitting side by side would tumble forward. My father's name was Edward. Most fo folks called him Ed or Eddie. And unless you were following Eddie's commands or his schemes, such as swatting butterflies, he was uninterested in what you were up to or had to say. On and off during adulthood, uh, on and off during childhood, my father called me an abortion and the result of a drip. As I got older, dad called me a piece of shit. And one time when I was a young man pleading with him for a relationship, he looked me in the eyes and said, I wish you were dead. In the last decade, my weekly nature commentaries in the Providence Journal linked us. My dad was blind in his later years, and he enjoyed it when my mother read him my stories, particularly if they included the grandchildren. After Eddie passed away in 2012, I came to see that his often miserable manner had led me to develop my own direction and control in life. Love, I had come to believe, was the opposite of possessing, suffocating, and deserting another creature. No one wanted to be forgotten, like a dried butterfly in an old book. People wanted to be remembered. Sometime in my 30s, I chose to surround myself with good men, healthy men. And then I made the wisest choice to marry a healthy woman who actually loved me. Her name is Karen, and Karen's parents and grandparents built relationships around commitment, respect, and common interests. They just accepted me, and I found the courage to embrace them. Karen and I are now in our 23rd year of marriage. We have two sweet children. And using a term that would, make my, that would have made my dad smile, I have to say I am a lucky motherfucker. <laughs> a few years ago, scientists learned that it was the antennae of monarch butterflies that governed their migration. Without antennae, monarchs were lost. Every creature needs a, its own means of direction. For a person, this could be an inner compass that leads you safely through life, or it could be the belief in your own self-worth. I offer this advice. Don't let anyone crush your source of direction. Don't allow anybody 
to seal the book on you, especially when you're still alive. I've spent a lot of my adult life overcoming shame. Dad, I was a good little boy. I am on a journey just like that fragile and innocent butterfly with wings more beautiful than stained glass that I crushed in a book more than 50 years ago. I've learned to come out of the dark and to shine a light on what I have to say. And I talk now because I embrace the words of the writer, Emma Lou Warner Thane, who said, our stories are what make the difference. And if we can tell them honestly, we can hope to help each other. In the end, we have nothing to offer each other but our stories.